And hello once again from the Neverboard Gaming Community. My name is Alex Brangan. I'm sitting here with John Jepson. Uh, we are going to be watching a match of our Saturday Night Modern event here. Uh, Jund Mirror match uh, between Mr. Jumpson, who's on the right side of your screen, against Michael Norbit. Uh, Jund, of course, the big beneficiary of the recent unbanning of Bloodbraid Elf. Uh, so, uh, John, tell us a little bit about navigating this mirror. So, what you want to do in this mirror match is you want you want to make sure that you actually have more threats than your opponent's answer. Uh, you'll see later on in the uh, in, in the sideboard games where people usually take out their discard spells. You want to make sure you have more threats than your opponent, and uh, hopefully. Grind it out. And we see Norbit taking a mulligan here. John neglecting to keep his hand of seven. See if Norbit likes the six any better. And we see a land in there, at least one land is a terminate. Um, he likes it. Gonna scry. Norbit always takes some time to decide. He decides he likes it. John opening up with his Black Cleave Cliffs into a turn one Inquisition of Kozilek. From what I can remember, uh, I think I took out the Groom Flayer. The reason for that is when you play your Inquisition of Kozilek, or any discard spells, you want to sculpt their hand into what your hand will be. So judging from my first turn play, I have a lot of removal spells. I can easily answer his turn two play, which is a Dark Confidence. Yeah, the Dark Crawford or Grim Flayer. He's got a Grim Flayer yeah. as well. But you take out the Inquisition as well, try to hide information about your hand. Exactly. And stop him from taking out your best card. Of course, he does top deck what looks to be a Lightning Bolt. So he's got a first turn play anyway. Going to lay down the Black Cleave Glyphs, representing that Lightning Bolt mana, passing it back. And then the Thoughtseize. So now you're going to see that Bolt one way or another. We'll see if he decides to cast it in response. He does not. <laughs> now, what do you think? What card should you pick if well, you're on my side? Uh, well, if you're holding a lot of removal spells, I think you just go ahead and take the Terminate. I don't know why you picked the Grim Flayer here, though. Could you uh, enlighten me on that choice? Um, the thing is, I honestly cannot remember like what's in my hand, but... Uh, <laughs> Like I wish I took an, I, I've taken notes, but I didn't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> I can't see what's in your hand exactly either. But um, or we're gonna crack his verdant catacombs here. Gonna go right to seventeen. Reach for that shock. Probably just gonna run out his dark coffin on here and hope it can move. Back on Norbit, he's been playing a lot of black and decks for years. Yes, that's true. Abzan was his deck for the longest time. Before that, he was running like a black white tokens deck, like right after Bitter Blossom got unbanned. That was his jam. Mm -hmm. Is it the same thing for Standard too, or no? Um, I don't know what he's playing in Standard lately, actually. Although in Modern lately, he has been playing a lot of Burn as well. That's been the deck that he's on the most. This is the uh, first time in a while we've been seeing piloting junk. Anyway, there's that Dark Confidant. Top deck Fatal Push. Mm -hmm. Get out of here. Into a forest. The reason I did it because uh, I don't want him to benefit any single uh, card advantage. Mm -hmm. It's like kill on sight. Kill on sight, don't let him get an extra card. I think Norbit might be stuck on lands here. Unless that's another one that he just drew. Yeah, it is. It's another Verdant Catacombs. What is he reaching for here? Gotta remind him to. Do the <laughs> do the phone counter because that's the one for the viewers. Into a basic swamp. Does he have Liliana? That's a scary part about, about this matchup. If you don't have an abrupt decay for that Liliana, it's usually game over. Well, you are representing the mana for abrupt decay, so. Because mm -hmm. John decks, they typically play one creature at a time. Oh, well, he does have another Grim Flare, though with sorcery creature land in his graveyard. So not quite to delirium, but getting close. Just needs one more card type. Now I remember on this specific moment, I don't want to lightning bolt it because he can in response bolt me. Yes. Wasting my lightning bolt and I lose life. Yes, that's true. He does still have the lightning bolt. You saw it before with the Thoughtseize. Yeah. I think you just windmill slam blood braid off here. Yep. Let's see what you run into. Oh, a fatal and push. And it's a fatal push. That's a whammy. Well, and that's a whammy for him, I should say, not for you. And then Lightning Bolt the Blood Raid Elf just to... Ugh. 
And it's that's why people play Bloodbraid Elf right now in Jund. Norbert looking a little light on threats all of a sudden. Those early discard spells paying off, and then Fatal Push. One two Fatal Pushes, play. yeah, two Fatal Pushes. One on the Dark Rock, one on the uh, Grim Flare just now. Colgon's Command always. Oh. That card got so, so, so good after Bloodbraid Elf got unbanned. That's very true because a lot of people are really thinking, okay, Bloodbraid Elf into K Command is usually value town. Yeah, but it, even in this particular scenario, you're just like, okay, I'm just going to bring back my Bloodbraid Elf and then do another thing. Exactly. Just, just, for, just for bringing back the Bloodbraid Elf, I would spend three mana to do that. Absolutely. So if I'm and, getting a bonus on top of that? And as, like, if you can see, Norbit right now is a uh, Hellbent. He only had. He will have one card on his upkeep, and uh, I'm hoping it's not going to be a creature. Living off the top deck is not a good place for Jung to be. Exactly. You want to get those threats out. Threats are better than answers. He finds Raging Ravine, so that's something. But if you've got another removal spell, as long as it's not like an abrupt decay, Fatal Push will work. Lightning Bolt will work just fine. But Ghost Quarter, obviously. Mm -hmm. Fulminator Mage. I don't know if Fulminator Mage is in your list or not. Uh, on my specific deck list, no. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. I've, I've heard some Jun players kind of swear by it as a way to get out of uh, Tron. Yeah, yeah. I guess it depends on how you build Cyborg. But uh, I can see like uh, that card being in my Cyborg in the future. Just passing the turn here, holding up potential removal. And what is that? Colagon's Command, again, discarding Norbit's top deck and then bringing back another creature. Yeah, at that moment, I just want to make sure... Oh, no, he put, bolted him for two. Excuse me. Yeah. At that moment, I just want to make sure he doesn't have any uh, card in his hand. Yeah. That's actually a pretty smart play. That kind of explains why you didn't just slam the Bloodbraid off that you just brought back. Exactly. Of course, now, here she comes. Hopefully, I don't whiff this time. That nice Steve Argyle Bloodbraid off, too, from the... Oh, I next. Oh, into Inquisition. And, yeah. Oh, uh, that's not good. Well, you still get the 3-2 with haste, at least. Yep. But passing the turn here, I'm guessing just not wanting to run it into the Raging Ravine. Now, my, my thing is, on this match, uh, I've noticed Norbit did not attack me in this turn. Because at, at that moment, he's thinking, I have a Fatal Push or a Lightning Bolt. Mm. Well, you have been finding lots of removal so far. Here we see that uh, Black Red Fetch Land going off. I'm blanking on the name of it all of a sudden. Uh, no, I'm sure I remember it. It's the one that I don't have a place set up. <laughs> oh, Black Leaf Cliffs. No, 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 not oh. Black Leaf Cliffs. That's the fast land. I'm talking about the fetch. It's blood oh, something. Blessing. Yeah, Bloodstained blood Mire. Blood that's what it was, yeah. And now here we go with the Blood Braid Elf. Norbit's just going to take the three damage. Go down to ten. He's got to find some sort of answer or gas here. Nope, yeah. just more land. But we'll see if he decides to turn on the Raging Ravine. No, he's going to tap two for Scavenging Ooze. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. And again, Norbit kind of playing uh, defensively with that Raging Ravine. He doesn't want to get blown out by a single one mana spell for his trouble of tapping four lands for a man land. Oh, absolutely. That's especially true against any black red deck, not just the Mirror, but decks like Mardu Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. So. And he's got three green mana available to do what he wants the scavenging to start getting things out of the yard. Yeah, that that scavenging use will prove to me a, tr a big pain. Because not only can shrink shrink your graveyard, it will definitely uh, buff your life total. And it will be bigger than a Tarmo Guard, much of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I see you uh, digging around at his graveyard wondering, okay, how many creatures he have in there? We know he's got a couple Grim Flayers, we know he's got a Dark Confidant. I was really excited to see Grim Flayer C play in this format. Just, you know, because I love that card in Standard, and uh, I was sad to see it go, but uh, seeing it uh, get new life in Modern. I think you do have Delirium here. Instant Land. I think so. Sorcery. Do you have a creature? Hmm. Quick question in the uh, Grim Flayer. A lot of lists, they don't play Grim Flayer. I do. What do you th what's your opinion on that? I just like the card. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not exactly an expert on the on Jundex, on piloting Jundex, or on Modern, for that matter, as a, as a general rule. But I just really like the card. 
And I think if you can get an early swing in with it and just start uh, stacking your next draw or dumping things in the yard that need to be dumped in the yard, some extra value you can get off of Kulagon's command next turn, perhaps. Exactly. Uh, one of the main reasons I, ru I run a Grim Flare is I want to make sure my Blood Braid, when it cascades, it cascades into actual creature or, or spells that I, I can use and not whiff. Yeah, Grim Flare is one of the biggest non-whiffs as far as two drops go. The quality of two drops in Jund is very, very high. It's very Armor Goyf and Scavenging Ooze and Grim Flare. But you do have to build around Delirium. There is the first Liliana of the game. Uh, this could present a problem. It will. Norbert has no cards in hand, of course, so if he decides to just plus Liliana, only, only you'll have to discard anything. Exactly. But two very good creatures out there. Then in response, I had to like, terminate it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's going to go away anyways. Well, now, now he doesn't really have much of a choice. Now he's got to just go after the threats. And now you definitely have Delirium for sure. Because exactly. a creature just entered. I believe they top deck a, a Brock Decay. Oh, wow. All right. That's huge. And then Grimflare cracks in for four. Now, when this triggers, I remember I had a choice. It's either a bunch of lands or Liliana. And the reason I took out Liliana is... I want a real answer on Raging Ravine. Mm -hmm. uh, Liliana will will die immediately to Raging Ravine. Now, I know Nor Norbit's playing around with what, what's in my hand, mm -hmm. and eventually he'll find out it's not a removal spell. Mm -hmm. So what I want is either a Terminate, Fatal Push, or Lightning Bolt. This is a hard choice, so but I had, I had to take out the Liliana. So you got the Liliana in there, I saw a land, and then I don't know what the third card is. What is what is in your hand, actually? I. Uh, I think it's double hand, double double land, and uh, Liliana. He just throws it all away. I don't want any of these cards. Yeah. Another uh, black lip flips, a fetch land, and Liliana. Yeah. And oh, there's Tarmogoyf. Okay, so we have Planeswalker, creature land, instant sorcery. I did not see any artifacts or enchantments. I'm pretty sure Tarfire is on neither of your lists. Mm -hmm. So this Tarmogoyf is going to be a five six. That's going to be bigger than the Grim Flayer. So now Norbit starting to get a little bit of advantage again. Jepson got to find a removal spell at some point, and I was just going to pass the turn. And if you notice in this um, mirror match, it's really swingy. Mm -hmm. It's very swingy. There's a, a lot of back and forths. Yeah, I was playing in this exact same tournament, and uh, you know, I was playing you actually in this mm -hmm. exact same tournament. Uh, I remember that one, that first game. Mm -hmm. I very just, swingy. you know, I resolved double phantasmal image. Just like, you know what? I don't have any humans left. Let's just make more Tarmogoyfs. Exactly. And now we can see him attacking, and this is when he knew that I do not have a removal spell. Yeah, just fearless with the Raging Ravine. Please throw your Grim Flare at it. I do not mind losing it now. I've got a Termogoyf. And there's the trade. I had to. Morbid confidently swinging with that Raging Ravine. Now all too willing to lose it. Now he knows for sure Jepson lacks a removal spell, or at least he did at the time. Maybe he's top decked one. Passing the turn back. Two Lightning Bolts in Norbit's hand. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Yep, five six down to twelve. Funny enough, after uh, I blocked the uh, the original win with my Dream player, I drew. <laughs> There's the ghost quarter. quarter, yeah. All right, like that. Got that's gotta feel so bad. Oh yeah, absolutely. But what are you gonna do? Down to seven. The two lightning bolts would take John to one, but. Not enough. Or it's just gonna lay down his black cleave cliffs, get some more mana. And this, when you hit the lot, the uh, you get mana ma mana flood basically. Mm -hmm. Late game, John has a has its you know weakness of uh, top decking lands. Michael Norbit made just so many sick top decks to come back in this because he was facing down a very bad situation. But one of the strengths of John, um, modern of course, is a very very random format. It's very top deck intensive. But Jun's card quality, just in general, and there's the bolt to end it. And there it is. Yeah, Jun, Jun's card quality in general is just very, very high. Every single card does a lot of work all by itself. Just based, just based on the fact that the game's been going on long. And that's the strength of cards like Tarmog Wave and Grimflare. Mm -hmm. It's very, very easy to get them to be larger than Absolutely. they normally would be at their mana costs. Exactly. Scavenging now, you the same thing. Now, in the mirror match, like I said before we started, um, you have to make sure that you have more 
threats than your opponent. So a good rule of thumb, and a lot of play, a lot of players do this. Um, they typically tend to uh, take out the discard spells. I don't know what's uh, what's your what's your take on that? I, I think that's actually a very good idea. Is uh, taking out the discard spells. Yeah, uh, the reason for that for that is again, like I said, you want to make sure you have actual threats and answers. Um, it's all about card quality, and uh, at the end of the game, you don't want to be top decking discard spells. And Jun gets in top deck wars very, very easily. Mm -hmm. That's why you gotta play a card like Bloodbraid Elf, just to get that two for one. Mm -hmm. But then again, I've seen some players where they still uh, keep their discard spells. Now, again, maybe it's their style of play, I don't know. But uh, for it's me, it's always work out. Just take out the uh, discard spells and put, put in more threats. There's a lot of players who swear by the extra information that you get out of discard spells. So I can see the argument for it, but I generally agree with you. I think they're pretty bad in any matchup where you have to consider your life total and you have to consider that you're going to be in a top deck war. Exactly. And if you're top deck a discard spell late, that's obviously terrible. Now, if I can remember, uh, my, uh, my, my sideboard was... Uh, I actually put in two Kitchen Finks, a uh, Thrun and another Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, the reason for that, uh, in my opinion, is uh, Thrun, it cannot be targeted, obviously. It has Hexproof. Uh, Fatal Push, um, Terminate won't work. Maelstrom Pulse won't work. Uh, Kitchen Finks, it's a, it's a threat that doesn't really go away that, uh, that easily. No, it uh, doesn't. And provides you of two life. Four Actually, life, four. technically. Exactly. <laughs> two, two coming in and two coming back. Mm -hmm. That's very, very necessary in any grind against any deck that's trying to deal you damage to creatures. And I, I believe that it's actually really good against Liliana of the Veil. Mm -hmm. You know, if, uh, if they're trying to make me uh, sac sacrifice a creature, sacrifice it. Absolutely. It comes back into play and I get to win. Yeah, these John Mirror matches are always very, very swingy, just because, like I said, the card quality is just so high. And these, these decks tend to be very expensive, among the most expensive in all of Modern, and that's saying something. It's very expensive. But then again, it's really fun to play. One of the reasons a lot of players play fair decks, you know, in a format where it's usually defined by unfair stuff, mm -hmm. uh, Jund and uh, a couple of Grixis Deck Shadow are one of the decks that people tend to play because it's one deck to play. The, but the fair decks, like I said, tend to have very high card quality. It's all about how much you can get out of one card. And Jund is very much the archetypal just pile of best cards in modern. Yep. <laughs> At least in their colors. It, you know, actually, it did used to be you know just a pile of best cards in modern for a while because before Blood Great Elf was first banned, they were playing cards like Lingering Souls. They would splash white. Exactly. Now, we can see here Norbit actually keeping the, uh, the discard spells. Yeah, he's got... Thoughtseize, turn one, seeing Dark Confidant, Lightning Bolt, Terminate, and three lands. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I kept this hand because I wasn't really expecting him to actually keep discard spells. I was expecting him to keep creatures. I kept that hand because that hand is actually very good against creatures. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of removal spells. That's a lot of removal spells, but he takes the one Bob Marr away. Mm -hmm. No extra draws for you. Oh, Marvin's got so much gas in his hand here. We see Liliana, Terminate, Raging Ravine. Scavenging use, I think, at the back. Yep. <laughs> turn two land, John thinking very carefully about his play here. He just got his original turn two plan taken away from him. Just gonna pass, holding up that terminate mana. See what Norbit does. Pass the turn. Black Cleave Cliffs, pass it right back. I guess at this point of the game, no one really wants to play a creature. Because they you you know we'll get uh will get zapped or fatal push or abrupt decayed. Yeah. This two <laughs> two decks that are supposed to be kind of like creature decks, well, mid rangey. Yeah. Just staring at each other, not wanting to blink. Exactly. You gotta just play very, very conservatively and try and win the guessing game about what's in your opponent's hand. Of course, Norbit knows most of what's in your hand at this point because he thought he's earlier, but probably just holding out for that Liliana, hoping you don't have abrupt decay. Right now, seeing Norbit's hand a little bit, it's pretty stacked. Yeah, it's like two plane swappers and removal spells. It's oh, he's got another good. Liliana in there? I only saw the one. I saw, like, I'm seeing two. Oh, there's two. Yeah. 
was just going to tap out and play one fearlessly. I would if I had two of them. Absolutely. Like, if I had to, like, you have to do that to, like, bait up the abrupt the game if you have to. Of course, he's discarding face down because both players have to choose at the same time what to discard. So, no free information. There you go. And two lands go away. Now, Lil an answer to Liliana in this matchup is really uh, a game over. So, I have to like make sure it goes away immediately. Bolting it at the end of his turn. And uh, I'm pretty sure I played a creature. If you got a Blood Braid Elf, that'll finish the job. Exactly. Well, there's Dark Confidant again. A little land screwed here. Missing that drop. Liliana, of course, down to a low enough loyalty to where she cannot make you sacrifice Dark Confidant, but Norbert does have a removal spell. I think one of the reasons I played the, uh, the, uh, the Dark Confidence, I have another copy in my hand. Oh, I didn't know. I did not even notice that. So you top deck two of those, I guess. Exactly. <clears throat> After you took away the one, you find two more. That's kind of insulting. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Thoughtseize let him know that. Uh, so yeah, you must really regret throwing away that land. You thought maybe you were gonna try draw another one. Yeah. There's Tarmogoyf, so we have Sorcery, Land, Instant, Creature. So it's a 4-5 top one. 4-5, uh, cannot be bolted, but can be pushed. No. It's very hard to bolt a Tarmogoyf, to it's be fair. very hard. Very I've hard. learned that the hard way, playing against you, in fact. <laughs> All right, let's see if he gets any bigger off of this discard. Norbit ditching his other Liliana, so it will get bigger. And then a Terminate on John's side, so it is now a 5-6. Yeah, but it doesn't matter, Fatal Push. That's one of the reasons I discarded Terminate. Because uh, I want to make sure that I answer the Goyf and the Liliana my turn. And you just found a Liliana of your own. So now Dark Confidant's going to swing at Norbit's Liliana. Mm -hmm. Norbit's probably going to Lightning Bolt to save her. Oh no, let her go. <laughs> hmm. Now at this point of the game, uh, I was fairly confident that I had the advantage. Like even though I know he has a Raging Ravine, but uh, I'm still ahead. He doesn't have, oh, he, I think he just topped like the mountain. Yep. So he does have enough mana to activate it and swing if he wants. And he's going to do just that, and Liliana goes away. Ridge and Ravine getting a free plus one plus one counter off of that. Another one. Another Liliana. And that's what it is. <sighs> Not the greatest answer to Raging Ravine, but you do have her if you want her. And I don't know if you noticed, I, uh, I played a Ghost Fire. That's true. Making sure I have answered the original thing. Getting rid of that tireless tracker. Oh, that's what that was. It wasn't a scavenger goose, it was a tireless tracker. That's a really, really good card. That's one of my favorite cards in this format, actually. I love seeing it in John. Oh. <laughs> the Liliana <laughs> Wars! There it is. Oh my there goodness. Typical John. Typical uh, mirror match. And now they're just uh, both of you guys staring at each other. Oh, right into Kitchen Finks. Kitchen Finks. This is one of the reasons I uh, put Kitchen Finks is uh, against Liliana. It's actually pretty good. Plus one Liliana for no value. Mm -hmm. And the Ghost Quarter is still available to pop Raging Ravine whenever yeah. you want. Yeah. Exactly. I'm pretty sure uh, Norbit here is looking for... Uh, Removal spell for that kitchen face. Uh, we don't know what this thing is. Maybe he just found one. Oh, uh, Dark Confidant. Dark Confidant. Plus one, no value. <laughs> Liliana of the Fail. Sack that bomb. Tag, and it goes away. I'm fairly ahead at this point. Yeah, after seeing that play, like, you already had the answer to his play on board. I'm not sure why he just decided to play into it. But it did force you to keep Juliana further away from ultimate, but... Oh, there's the Maelstrom Pulse. So it didn't really matter. That, that'll, that'll give Norbit some breathing room, but now the Kitchen Pinks is coming after him. Yes. Looks like you're signaling lane number five. So we might see a Blood Raid Elf show up. In hindsight, I hesitated. Mm. I'm thinking of casting it right now, but uh, 
I want to make sure I don't uh, whiff on anything. I want to make sure he has something in his hand or he has, some, he has a creature on board before I actually cast it. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Like, cause I, I know the rule of thumb generally with Blood Braid Elf is not to play it into an empty board because sometimes you do find that removal and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm just not going to cast it. But maybe you just try to pile on the damage. And here he comes with Huntmaster of the Fells. This is a card that's seen a lot of play in Red Green Ponza lists recently, but not so much in Jund. Mm -hmm. Although it's a good uh, replacement for Blood Braid for a while. For a while. Yeah. And I believe this is where I actually played the Blood Braid. Right, here she comes. Let's see what she runs and into. Terminate. Yep. This is why you don't run out the yeah. Blood Braid right away. <laughs> exactly. That poor wolf is going to have to trade with the elf. Morbid taking three from the Kitchen Finks. And the Ghost Quarter is still untapped. He cannot come in with that Raging Ravine. Yep. Well, there's a Stomping Ground. That's not going to help. Oh, for a second I thought, oh, that's a second Raging Ravine. Nope. In case you think just slowly wearing him down. Take the damage. He's down to seven. Can Michael Morbid top deck any way out of this? He's just going to draw and pass here. Obviously, I know the results of the match because I played them, <laughs> but uh, it's kind of interesting seeing it in a different view. Following up with Tarmogoyf, which I think is still a 5 6. It is a 5 6. Yeah. There's a Planeswalker. I mean, this is going to be game here because you just aggressively ghost quarter the Raging Ravine at this point, don't you? Kind of have yeah. to. Yeah. Oh, he's got a Dread Boar for that Tarmogoyf, so. But now he doesn't have enough mana to activate Raging Ravine. He does not. So he's going to have to take the Kitchen Finks damage, go to one, and then hope to top deck some kind of miracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Um, what is... Oh, that's not oh. the right card. <laughs> there it is. There it is. The Scavenging. Yep. So now two threats out. Norbert is going to have to find Bloodbraid Elf specifically, I think. But he's got a Fatal Push for the Scavenging use, but in response, exile a card. Taking now one of his creatures. Let's get a little bit of a life cushion just in case. There goes the Huntmaster. Yeah, I want to make sure if he actually has access to Keiko Man that he doesn't put a Huntmaster back in his hand. Yeah, a K Command or a Blood Braid is what he needs here. Exactly. Let's see what he found. He's getting ready to tap lands. I think here comes Blood Braid Elf. There she is. The original into Kolokon's <laughs> Command. Oh my god. Wow. Rigs me nightmares. And discarding the <laughs> Maelstrom Pulse in your hands. Kitchen Finks <laughs> persists, but it's now a 2-1, and there's a blocker for it. So. And now you see it's very swingy. Oh yes. No, I, I completely agree. I... I was not going to argue at that point. And now a straight trade exactly. between the Elf and the Kitchen Fings. Now Norbit's all I still need, alive at one. All I need is a Lightning Bolt or a K-Command. That's all I'm asking. Like, he's down to one. I'm at 16. Any source of burn. If Norbit top decks a fetch land, it's completely dead. It does nothing. And now Norbit's got a Kitchen Fings of his own. He goes back up to three. Still not out of bolt range, but he's got a threat. Yep. Yeah, I blame that one. Tarmogoyf. Looks like another Tarmogoyf. So Kitchen Finks, not quite the threat it was anymore. Now it's just a chump blocker. But looking at his graveyard, what could he have? Tazigar, maybe? Uh, or maybe he's found a, another Kolagon's command. Probably. Counting his mana very carefully here. Oh, yeah. Grimflare. He Grim was checking Flare. for Delirium. Okay, so he's got Creature, Instant Planeswalker, Land. He's just good. Yeah, it's a Sorcery point. Planeswalker, yeah. Now, facing down this board, my... The first priority for me is not Kitchen Finks. It's still Grimflare. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's kind of upsetting that Kitchen Finks sticks around, but Grimflare is definitely the priority here. Exactly. Because... Right now he's representing a very nasty double block that will kill the Tarmogoyf and will leave his Kitchen Finks alive no matter how you assign damage. Exactly. Oh, did he top deck a Cold Guns Command here? No, oh. Liliana. Oh, wow, what a play. Mm -hmm. And now here comes Flare. Kitchen Finks staying at home just in case. 
not wanting to lose to that top deck blood raid elf. Exactly. This is gonna hurt. That could that green flare will break the game open if left unanswered. Uh in a in a in a match like this, you know, you wanna make sure that you don't draw die cards. But uh, luckily I was able to answer with an abrupt decay. Yeah, jumps in opting to abrupt decay to stop Morbit from uh, stacking his top deck rather than saving it for Liliana. I'm sure exactly. that's what you were thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's a hard choice, but you know what? Dream Flayer will break the game open. Liliana, I could still probably answer. Yeah, and in this situation, Norbit might... Okay, he's definitely going to plus Liliana here. I thought for a second maybe he just thought his card was dead. And he's free to attack with the kitchen things. I Another Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf still at 5-6. Raging Ravine. This is when you notice I uh, start like drawing all those lands. I was uh, hoping for answers, any removal spells or uh, creatures. Michael, no. Michael Norbert with a monumental comeback. Flood Raid Elf into the Cold Nine's Command. I'm taking 5 damage. That's a big swing. And again, Kitchen thinks staying at home just in case. John Jepson does have the Raging Ravine in play, so he's already representing a threat whether he draws Blood Raid Elf or not. But Norbert also has a Raging Ravine of his own to block with, which would force Jepson to use that Ghost Quarter. This is a hard one for me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, to be that close to beating someone and then just and have them top deck exactly what they need, right? Exactly. This is like, I'm pretty sure you've experienced something like this. Yeah, very recently, <laughs> in fact. <laughs> the previous night. And there's a, a Grim Flayer and a second Ghost Quarter, I believe. Exactly. Mm. Grim Flayer easily has Delirium on Jump's inside as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> At this point, I'm pretty sure he, he has the game. There's like no combination of cards I can draw to stop a board like this. I'm down to 8. I went down from 16 to 8. Yeah. And even if I kill the Kitchen Finks, he's going back to 5. Yeah, I think if I'm Norman, I just let go of Liliana to get the Grim Flayer out of the way. Uh -huh. And now no fear coming right at him with the 8 damage, forcing him to have to use Raging Ravine to block. Bolt the blocker before blocks. That's yeah, game. That was Michael it. Norbit. Takes the game. What a game for, for Norbit, huh? Like, it's very swingy, and he, he was down to one, but he was able to pull it up. Yeah, I mean, what, what else What else can I say? This is this is what Jun Mirrors are like. <laughs> you know, you think you've got it, and then suddenly they find exactly what they need, that all-too-critical two-for-one. That's what Jund is. It's just a deck full of two-for-ones. Exactly. You know, we saw cards like Maelstrom Pulse and Huntmaster jump out, the ones that you don't see quite as often, but they still fit the theme just fine. Exactly. You know, again, as much as you can call two-for-ones a theme and not just playing good magic, right? <laughs> exactly. And again, <laughs> cards like Kitchen Finks, they, uh, they do a lot of things, a lot of work in this match. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Once again, this has been Alex Bring and John Jepson from the Neverboard Gaming Community. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you all so much. Have a good day. Thank you.